So yes, this is Cal Cats, the Cal Catster, and we're watching Fanime Day Two. Uh, I'm going. To, uh, I've really got really no behind the scenes stuff except that, except that because uh, the slideshow is kind of long, so it's almost as long as the last one. So I'm going to jump into that. But uh, suffice it to say, the place that had the action figures that were unboxed actually had crappy action figures, and they all had pieces missing. And they didn't appreciate me noticing that they had pieces missing. It was like, I didn't want them if they didn't have pieces missing. Come on. <laughs> also, this father and this kid were, like, looking at them, and he didn't want any either because there were pieces missing. Um, so I was like, ah, oh, if you're not going to buy anything, leave. Oh. It was like, well, nobody's going to buy your crap because it sucks. But, no, there, were, there was a better, a couple of better toy vendors that were just fine, but a little pricey. I uh, didn't go over there, and I did get a pair of cat ears. Uh, I always wanted a pair of cat ears, and I'll probably get a tail tomorrow. <laughs> I have a black cat tail, but I think one that matches my hair would work better. doesn't make me a furry. It makes me a furry's friend. Because you'd have to have a suit. Furry, furry friendly. It's like LGBT friendly, but furry friendly. Uh, yeah. The cow cat show is LGBT friendly. <laughs> And yeah, there was a panel on, on that kind of thing. There were some other ones I, I think it's mentioned on there. But uh, uh, yeah, they, and then ironically, there was a Lolita fashion show that I did not attend. Uh, yeah, because uh, no. Um, yeah, uh, different forms of uh, uh, of issues <laughs> that uh, we're just not going to go down that bunny trail. Um, anyway, so, yeah, it had nothing to do with a 70s movie. Anyway, so we're going to play the, the footage now, and that's all I've got. Behind the scenes. Uh, there were, yeah, I went to backyard and that kind of That's really all I got. Um, anyway, so, yeah. There's no behind the scenes. Just, uh, this is going to be, I guess, thrown on the beginning of the thing. So let's do the slideshow. Oh, yeah, this is Cal Cat, the Cal Cat's turn. And this is just a, I'm going to do a re reshoot of that little little recap thing that uh yeah the the there were a couple of stories here on this particular thing that I thought to address the bunny trail um it's so, okay first uh, first thing is first uh the the show and the channel do not advocate any sort of underage uh, gross stuff uh sexual stuff at all uh the the the, this Lolita thing was not the 70s movie, which if, or, or 90s prequel. If you're familiar with that, they probably shouldn't be. But if you're familiar with that, uh, it was a art housey sort of movie and uh, follow-up thing. Very similar to the later Tracy Lord's story. She was a porn actress who who was underage that pretended to be old enough to get into porn. So this movie is sort of kind of the same idea. This person that's not old enough gets into into porn. Uh, it's similar to a film called uh, Hardcore. It's similar to 13 a little bit. It's another one. It's similar to Kids a little bit. Uh, and the premise. Uh, the All of the actors in these other films were presumably not actually involved in any horrible experiences, but rather were actors, and it was, you know, it was, it was just acting. But but things like that could happen. Trafficking, human trafficking does happen. Don't do that. It's bad. Uh, so the, uh, the point was that when they were talking about the slash fiction stuff as well, someone, one of the, one of the guys in the audience brought up the brought up the Harry Potter stuff again from last year, probably the same guy. Uh, and, uh, and she doesn't like the, the, the slash fiction lady didn't like the Harry Potter stuff because, well, they're underage in Harry Potter. If you're writing, even if you were, you were underage when you wrote it, as she mentioned, she wrote some slash fiction, she was underage, uh, then it's still bad to do that because you're underage. So don't do that. Um, <laughs> don't publish it. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, when, when, you know, back in the, back in the day when the slash fiction stuff was, was available in publishing in the beginning of all that Reddit thing, 
there was a uh, there was a Transformers um, site that did a lot of stuff like that too. There was Slash and there was non-Slash and there was Transformers fanfic. Uh, well, Slash fiction of robots is is different, of course, because they're not of any age. They're robots, um, <laughs> and uh, and and uh, I saved some of that stuff and I found it here since and I told the lady about it afterward. I said. I have some old Transformers.com stuff, and I have some old slash fiction, Star Trek slash fiction. Uh, yeah, oh, goody, put it up on the site. Uh, yeah, well, I could put the Star Trek stuff up, but I won't make my name on it. Uh, <laughs> so, that's not going to happen. And no, it, it, they're all age. They're all of age. They're all over 18 on that. And uh, the writer was over 18. <laughs> Presumably, yeah, I, I, yeah. There's there's some slash stuff, Star Trek stuff. Uh, paired Picard and LaForge, I paired uh, Garrick and uh, Bashir, and I paired Q and Picard, and I paired uh, <laughs> a bunch of people, Kira and Kai Wynn. and I paired. Oh, that's weird. I paired like I paired like uh, who else? Who else got paired up? Uh, Yar and the Lizard. That was Mark's cards. Uh, and the other stuff, yeah, yeah, it was an old one. Yeah. That one was written when we were not old enough, so I can definitely cannot release that one. Can't have that. One. Nope, can't do that. One. Um, just not gonna put them on any Usenet thing. Not gonna. They, they they do exist, but you're not gonna see them on the Calcat show at all. Not gonna happen. The the Transformer stuff though is PG-13 enough that some of it has appeared, and there's been that Robotech thing that I did. A little back was was definitely slashy and had Rick Hunter. And the, it was, Edwards was kind of obs obsessed with him, so yeah, there was a little slashy stuff going on there because that was a story it was loosely based on an earlier thing that was in in one of those episodes. Uh, there was no byline on that one from the slash fiction I just mentioned from you know inspired by the alt fiction because it was kind of in general thing about Robotech. I didn't want to really do. A, yeah, there wasn't enough of that story left for it to be considered, oh, given a byline. Nope. Uh, it's a Calcat and Cowpoke and someone else. Uh, yeah, uh, Werewolf Fuzzy Face. <laughs> yes, that's it. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, there was, I didn't mention it this time, but last time when they did the Slash panel, that's what the Slash is, uh, yeah, fanzines, Slash zines. Uh, and that uh, I mentioned uh, last time, CM, who I actually knew. I knew the person that did the TNG slash fiction. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I know who that is. I know about the table and all that, yeah. We're not going to reveal who that is, but I know who that is. Say, no, I'm not going to, no. No, I'm not going to give you any of my stuff. <laughs> but but yeah, uh, so that's my little rant about slash fiction. I don't mind slash fiction as long as it's you know within the context and you know you have your story and pairings. And as I was saying, the uh, the, the there was somebody at there that that group in there and the, the 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 group in there. She was disgusted that some of us were there. I was there, and some other people were there. I wasn't the only one. She was like turning around and going, "Like, what are you doing here? What are you doing?" She's like looking at different people, but it's like, what? What? It's just to to which I said, uh, "I at the time, well, what are you doing in here? <laughs> you think it's horrible that I'm in here? Then what about you? <laughs> it's like you're listening to a slash panel. It's about shipping fiction of Xena and Kalista having sex, and to which to which." I said to the person next to me, weren't they married? <laughs> it, did, it never occurred to me they weren't. Um, they, they just didn't say it. They just, weren't they married? I thought they were like an item. And they were always in bed together and stuff. They just couldn't talk about it. <laughs> well, oh, of course there was a little too much amusement on that part. But, uh, but yes, I was a little too amused by it. Yes, it doesn't, it doesn't arouse me. It just makes me laugh. A lot of it. I mean, it's just probably not supposed to, but it totally does. I mean, I mean, you, 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 Quark and Odo. I mean, <laughs> what? Garrick and Bashir. I mean, come on. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, come, uh, CM and the others like that. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, those stories are safe and sound somewhere out there. If they reappeared, if, if CM reposted them somewhere, then I will read them again. But I, but I won't. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, they've started a slash ring. So yeah, and they mentioned Steven Universe, of which is already slash. Yeah, as long as the pairings are eighteen and up, so that's fine. <laughs> That's my slash rant. Because I felt like I should explain what this other stuff was about. So the, yeah, they so yeah, they Lolita. I didn't go to it. It was a costume dance thing. Apparently, although I did look look into the title afterward, and apparently they are sort of borrowing the idea of that. Uh, specifically, the idea of schoolgirl-like person, but she's really an adult, and she's going to do a fashion show thing. So in that sense, they are borrowing from the movie. Except the movie was not not, not cool. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to watch it. Even though it was fake, you still don't want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, but the fashion show I'm sure was fine, and uh, I'm sure there was nobody arrested. <laughs> Oh, are there cops here? Oh, no. no. <laughs> although, although, what was funny is, oh yeah, uh, this is behind the scenes stuff, right? So, so, uh, playing the thing. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll add some more stuff that's not about Slash or uh, anything. Uh, I was on the train going back, and there was a kind of crazy lady who got on. And she was nervously skewering an apple. She had this apple, so there was an apple scene, but she wasn't tossing it. She was skewering it with a pen. Just a regular ballpoint pen with a blue cap. And she, like, took the cap off and stuffed the core of the apple. She'd bitten off part of it. Ran it through the core. And then began to eat it. It's really bizarre. I gotta put that in a story. Lady who takes out, like, a teacher apple and a pen. Puts it in there. Starts eating it. It's a chip. Is it Shelly Scott from Pine Hill? She'd be like, yes. No, it wasn't. But that'd be funny. <laughs> be like, oh. Yeah, I went to high school. Man. The San Jose, it could have been. But probably wasn't. Anyway, there were these three uh, slovenly looking dudes. One guy had a bike. And, he looked, and they were rocker dudes. They were rocker stoners, basically. You know, Angie types. Um, from the... Pine Hill types, you know. Uh, I mean, one of them could have been anybody from the original cast, but wasn't. Not at all. Uh, the three of them are going off about like, like, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, I had a black hoodie on, and they had the blue pants, and it kind of looked vaguely like some sort of service person. I wasn't trying to. It was some spaceman, a space outfit, not a service thing. No, fanime. It was, it's, it's a costume. It's not real. Uh, <laughs> They began talking louder and louder about how they had weapons and guns and stuff. I thought it was rather odd that they're doing that on a train. And figured out like later, as I was at the bus stop later on, that they were probably trying to get my attention because they probably thought it was some sort of security guy. I was not. So, was, uh, how do you, uh, if they were, that's kind of stupid because if I was some security person, I, would have been like, okay, you're, you're kind of like making a scene on the train. I wouldn't have the, denied them their right to talk about guns, but and weapons and stuff on a train. But, 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 but I'm not a serviceman. So, <laughs> but it was like, why? What people think? Like, I guess the costume looked like uniformly enough, but it's a space like thing. It doesn't. It's not anything. <laughs> it's a sp sp space hero kind of thing. Anyway, so there's my little other thing. Yeah. Um. It's like, okay, yeah. Why is it that with, like, gun toting guys, and they've encountered this before, or they didn't have guns, but why is it with people that love guns and stuff feel that everyone else should hear about how they love guns and their gun rights and their, their Second Amendment rights? which states the right to bear arms to form a militia in the end of, event of armed rebellion, which does not mean you have the right to have 
super duper military style assault weapons. It means you have the right to have a weapon that can defend you. Prevent an armed rebellion. It doesn't mean you can have every weapon imaginable and stockpile an army worth of weapons. It means you can have as many as you please for that, yeah, for an armed rebellion. Yeah. Well, they, they only read the first part of that and not the rest. Oh, they, they just they, Anyway, but but yeah, they were they were going on about. I wasn't I was not interrupting them. I wasn't talking to them. I didn't know who they were. They were talking about rockers and stuff before that, and you know. But it was odd that they that they were like ranting. Maybe, maybe they were just soapboxing about their own like military beliefs, I guess, or something. It's always funny when, and you can tell that they actually didn't do any military time because. The way they were going on about drugs and pot and other stuff, too. They would have been 4F immediately and kicked out for this honorable discharge. <laughs> yeah, you didn't serve any military time, I don't think. <laughs> nope. Um, sure enough. Uh, didn't either. But, but yeah, uh, it's funny that, that when that when they, the, the more they talk about drugs, the more paranoid they also seem on the train. Yeah, because they get paranoid. Then they were, and then they, then they think people are, people are looking at us funny or whatever. It's like this is because you're making a scene on the train, which like a moron. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's why and you can just talk about it to your, amongst yourselves. Or, but I want to talk about armor-piercing rounds and forty-caliber guns and and, and 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 special bullets and shit. And it's like okay, but <laughs> you're gonna, if there was security on the train, they'd probably ask you to get off. <laughs> Not because it would be against your gun rights, but because you're making a, making a scene on the train. Yeah. Yeah, they're not taking your rights away. They're just saying you're making a scene. Um, nobody nobody told them to get off the train. So. Oh, yeah, and another thing on that train, to way back, um, when I got on the train with a bunch of, bunch of dudes, a couple of Asian guys, an Indian guy, and, and I got on a train, and... The back of the car, the, the front of the car stank. Like, like shit. Like there was like poo somewhere under a seat in the first part of the train. Uh, like maybe like somebody had dog poop on their shoe or something. Smell like dookie. It's nasty. And then later on those three guys, they, they didn't stink, but they moved. We all moved. And then they moved. Figured out what it was. Somebody had left a diaper on the train. Uh, it was like down near the conductor guy. And he, and he got off and he found it. The guy's like, oh god. Oh. And then they removed it from the train. So it wasn't on there for the rest of the trip. The, guy, ah. the conductor opened the door. He's like, ah, what is that? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Somebody left a skank bomb, a payday. What is it called when it's a diaper, though? Is that technically a payday? It's an unflushed turd, but it's different. It's like in a, it's like in a diety bag. I guess that's called like a Cleveland steamer or something. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. <laughs> well, Baltimore for some reason, because that was mentioned in a dirty shame of which they were all eighteen and old. Anyway, so that's my little. Pfft, train rant, I guess. <laughs>